What's going on YouTube? It's Jay Rich back again. Today we're talking about coax mounts and antennas. And welcome to part two of this series, sort of a beginner's guide to CB and getting your first CB set up. If you would, go on ahead and hit that subscribe right there in the corner. Like, share it, comment on it, hit the bell to get all the notifications. That way, I know you want to see more of this content. Otherwise, I don't know what you want to see. And as a disclaimer, I'm just going to say it. I'm a little long-winded sometimes. But I want to get you as much information as I can, and I try to consolidate it down into the shortest video possible. But if you're not watching the whole video, you might be missing something. And I know this because I get questions on a video of something that I already explained in the video. Not that I don't welcome your questions and your comments. And as most everybody can see, I answer almost every comment that I get. So with that being said, watch the video or you're going to miss something. All right, and since we're gonna be talking about antennas today, let me get this other disclaimer out of the way. The 102 inch whip that is 102 with the inch sign next to it is a stainless steel antenna that is eight and a half feet tall. Let me say this and get it out of the way for you gurus that are watching because this video is not really geared towards you, it's geared towards the beginner. So let me get this out of the way. The 102 inch whip is God's antenna. It is the best antenna that has ever been made. There is no other an antenna that has the muster to be even standing next to the 102 inch whip. The 102 inch whip is that much far superior of an antenna than any other antenna on the face of the planet. Kinda. So for the new people, the 102 inch whip is an eight foot quarter wave antenna that performs wonderfully. It's a wonderful performer. And yes, it will outperform probably 99.5% of any other antenna that's out there on the market for mobile use. Now, is the 102 inch whip always a feasible antenna? Is it always the best choice for you? Eh, probably not. Probably not. Maybe you park your car inside a, your uh, garage or in a parking deck all the time or something like that. And it's just not, it's just not feasible. Yeah, sure. You want the best antenna, but to me, it depends on the, the vehicle, the mounting location and all that good stuff. So, with that being said, the 102 inch whip is the best antenna ever made. I don't need your argument about it. I get it. It's the best ever made. So, I'm rambling on. I know it. Uh, let's go on ahead and start. So, now you got your radio. Off of the radio, now you need to run coax. This right here is 18 feet of what is called RG8X. It is very good. Very good starter coax let's say okay um it it does handle a lot of power i think you can somewhere around the 500 watt range is is where you want need to start stepping your coax up um it is uh shielded copper um and this stuff it's got on on there that is 95 percent um uh what is it 90 it's not not 95 percent efficiency or whatever a rating that's actually like wrote on the coax. Um, the ends of the coax make a huge difference too. And if you look at this stuff, so this right here is RG58. RG58 is not near as good as 8X is. And just a kind of a comparison, if I can even get this up here for you, for you to see just the difference in the thickness of the 8x that's how much better shielded it is uh, the center conductor is probably larger 
This does not have removable ends as to where these, you can cut these off like I did this one to snake them through the vehicle and then you solder a new end on. The ends are pretty important to use a quality end. Um, and, and you know, from some sort of um, antenna supply uh, place, um, DX engineering, um, antenna parts outlet, you know, place like that will have quality ends. Uh, Amazon, you can find good ends on Amazon if you're not finding the, the, uh, the, the knockoffs, I should say. So, and if you're going to run a mag mount antenna, like say the striker, it comes with coax already with it. Now, I'm going to show you on this coax, if you'll take this and run this down, all the way down, all the way down, there we go. Now you're going to hold here and then you'll twist this off. Okay, so now you can snake this through a grommet or a hole that's in the body of your vehicle. And then once you're on the other side, you screw it back down. And the all your mag mounts are going to be like this. And then this screws back up on here like so, so that you can screw it into the room. I get it later. I get it later. The little wheel also has coax uh, with it um, and I do know from other Wilson products that that striker um, coax in the end is gonna be better than this it um, so let's put that aside now when running new coax you want to be careful of making hard bends like this in the coax or say if you got your end here you don't want to crimp it like so um, because what you can actually do is it could break the center conductor in the center and now you have a bad piece of coax um, just as if you broke a wire you know uh, for anything you want to you now you want to keep the coax away from heat and if you have to run it say like over exhaust or something like that you get a roll of this stuff off of amazon it's a reflective heat tape and you would simply just wrap it around the coax like so also when running coax you don't want to coil the coax the excess co coax like this you do not want to coil this, especially if it's cheap. If it's real cheap stuff, do not coil it. It will interfere with a lot of stuff. With this 8X, it is shielded better, where if you need to do a coil or two, it is fine. So now we're step up to the mount. Your coax screws to here. Um, if you're going to run, say, a fiberglass or a whip antenna, you might get a mount like this. And you, this is a mirror mount for a big truck. And what some people will do is they'll take the bottom piece off. And with this piece, they might put it on a bed rail or a toolbox, something like that. And then they have the mount like this. And if you will look at this mount, see how it's got a black plastic right there? That plastic always has to be on top always 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 has to be on top you don't want it on this side because this side is your ground okay you have to isolate the ground from the positive which is your antenna here is a mount right here this is how you will get it out of the package The brass is your positive. The whole outside is your negative. The nut is part of your positive. You have a metal washer and you have this plastic washer. And this plastic washer has a ridge on the bottom of it. And what that ridge does is that it centers the mount in the hole and it keeps 
your positive right here, it keeps it centered so that it does not touch the metal of the mount or your bumper or the bed frame or whatever. There have been plenty of times, plenty of times, me along with others on some of the uh, CB pages where somebody will take a mount to put the washer on upside down. Nut is upside down. They will take and they will put it like so. And they'll put the nut on there or they'll, they'll take the metal washer. They'll put the metal washer right there. They'll take the nut. They put it right there and tighten that down. Now, what this have, what you have now done is you have no ground for your coax and your antenna. So now you have your antenna going in here and the positive waves or whatever are going all through what should be your ground. And that's not going to work. Um, one, you, live, you might burn your radio up um, and you're not going to hear anything. Nobody's going to hear you. It's just a big mess. So always, always, when you get this, your plastic washer goes on top. It gets located in the hole. And so on this piece, the outside is your ground. This is your positive, and you see how it's isolated between itself. Same thing on the bottom. The brass is your positive. All this outside is your negative or ground. I'm no, some, somebody's going to correct me. Somebody is going to come in and correct me, and that's fine. I don't care. I don't care. But that's how you think of this. This outside being a ground and this being a positive. You don't want them to touch. That's I mean, simple as that. You can't get any more simple than that. Now with your mag mount antennas, they are fairly simple. They're fairly straightforward. This has a magnet. This is your coil. Then you'll have a whip that goes up out of this. Um, once you take this black protective deal off, there are set screws and where you can adjust the antenna up and down. And if you need to, you can actually, uh, you'll cut the whip or cut the antenna part, cut it down to where you can get uh, if it needs to go lower. Also with these mag mounts, say if you're going into the car wash, into uh, your garage, a parking garage, something like that, and you need to take this off, what you can do is you can unscrew this coil in your left with, it's got goo in there uh, to help keep it dry or whatever. But there's a cap that comes with this. You could screw the cap down on there because you do want to keep this dry. You want to keep moisture out or you're going to get corrosion inside there. Then once that starts, then your, your system, your whole system, it just starts steadily going downhill. The more corrosion that gets in there, the more worse the system gets. So you can take this, the coil and the whip and put them inside the vehicle while you go through the car wash or the parking deck or whatever you're doing. Uh, once you've got all that, you take the cap back off, you screw this back on snug, don't over tighten it. And then your SWRs and everything will be right back to where they need to be. And I'm sure somebody is going to ask the question, what is the best coax out there for a small system? The LMR 240 ultra flex is a very good, um, coax, uh, as long as you're not running big power, I think I think you probably do five, six hundred watts out of that. Um, you know, but for the average person that's going to run up to say a hundred watts, uh, the RG8X is great, and the LMR240 is also great. Um, the, uh, the LMR240 is double shielded, as to where the RG8X is single shield. All right, now moving on to the antenna. Um, here in a minute, I do want to take you out to my pickup truck and we're going to look at a couple of options on, on that to see, I'm going to show you some of the ways I've seen it that are done wrong. Even today, when I was just on my way home from the store, I, I was like, I can't believe you put that antenna in that spot. You know, it just doesn't work at all. So I want to kind of show you some of the right and wrong ways of doing it. 
But first, let's talk about antennas. Given that you don't have a spot to put an eight and a half foot antenna, like the 102 inch whip, all right, let's move on. Um, you saw the mag mounts. Mag mounts are a great choice. Uh, they're not always feasible because some vehicles are aluminum these days. And um, you would have to make some sort of a steel plate uh, to mount somewhere to set that magnet on, basically. Um, with the mount that I just showed you, uh, if you can do that on a truck bed, uh, they do have um, a style like that that goes down into the fender and kind of goes down in like that in between the fender and the hood. That's a popular mount. Uh, I know Jeep guys, they, they like to mount them on the front. Um, and some people in cars, they, they like the, um, the hood mount. Bed rails and toolboxes are quite popular also to mount something off of. And you want a decent little antenna. And uh, here is a fiberglass antenna that does not have a coil. This is a Francis Hot Rod antenna. That's the name of it, Francis Hot Rod. They are uh, fiberglass, they are pretty flexible, they are durable. Um, that's not to say you can't break it. Um, and the way that these work is that there is a copper conductor down that runs through the center of the antenna. It runs, it's encapsulated in the fiberglass. And with 18 feet of coax, these work wonderfully. They are literally, you screw them in there, you go. There's very rarely that you have to trim one of these antennas because this antenna is designed to work with 18 feet of coax on, on a single antenna system. However, with these Francis hot rod antennas, their drawback is the power capability. These are only rated up to 150 watts. So anything bigger than that, anything pushing any more watts, you're gonna put an amp on there, or you just have a what we call a big radio, uh, not due to the physical size of the radio, but due to the power output of the radio. We call them a big radio. Um, you'll be overpowering this particular antenna, but I do, I really do like these Francis antennas. They are, it, it is a great little antenna um, for, but it's not the best. Let's move on to another style of fiberglass antenna. Uh, this is the Fire Stick 2. It is a really good antenna. It is. Um, it's very easy to tune these. You pull this cap off. There is a screw at the top where you will unscrew and screw back in uh, to lengthen or shorten the antenna. And we will get into antenna tuning in a later video. Just bear with me. Uh, this is a what's called a top load antenna and the load or the coil is right here It's the tight winding of wire that is located near the top and I like these antennas for um, Or this style of antenna uh, for say Jeep guys um, pickup trucks uh, where you're mounting say on the bumper or you're mounting on the bed rail. Um, I do like these top load antennas. Uh, the one fiberglass antenna that I like better than the Fire Stick 2 is a skip shooter antenna. Um, I've found skip shooters to be just, they're just that much better than, than the Fire Stick 2. I do end up breaking a lot of these Fire Stick 2 antennas right at the threads. I've broken many of these antennas. But however, they are still a great antenna. Now let's talk about some of the whip antennas out there. And the ones that I have are the Wilson 2000 trucker antennas. I keep these laying around for some reason or another. I don't know why. I, I do use them every once in a while. But um, if, if something happened uh, to these antennas, I, I'm not buying anymore. They're, they're just, they're way overpriced. Um, they're... I don't know. They, I just don't get good performance out of them that I feel. I don't feel I get good performance out of them. Let's just say that. Let's just say I feel there's better options out there. And there are. There's other uh, antennas like these, these whip antennas on the base load. Um, I really like Hustler antennas. A lot of people run uh, Serio antennas. 
uh, they say that those are good or they say those are great actually um, I don't know I've never bought one um, but with these they come with the 5 or the 10 inch shaft and these need to be mounted up high like a headache rack or maybe in a mag mount you screw them into a mag mount if you can find a magnet uh, for that thread um, this coil needs to be above the roof line it's it's it just it has to be yeah you'll hear a little bit you'll talk a little bit but when you get the coil of an antenna up above the roof line you're going to do great that's why I, I do like the fiberglass top loads because some people are limited as to where you can mount this now they do make longer shafts for these you'd go 20 22 24 inch shafts but those shafts are like thirty dollars or thirty five dollars you already spent sixty or seventy bucks on this now you're in it for another thirty dollars now you've got a hundred dollar antenna that i don't feel is worth forty dollars there are plenty of antennas out there skip shooter antennas are thirty dollars and they will outperform this antenna any day so but these are durable at the end um they take a lot of abuse at the end of the antenna um, if they are mounted high because it is a steel whip and you can buy new whips uh, if you bend it up too much. Um, but these are a favorite for people. Um, but the, like I said, the coil is at the bottom. Uh, so what, wherever you're mounting this, that coil needs to be up in the air. Height is might when it comes to antennas. The higher you get that coil, the better. All right, now let's take a couple of these antennas. I'm going to set up outside at my pickup truck, show you a couple of different options on where to mount, where the best place is to mount an antenna. All right, YouTube, so here we are at my pickup truck and where a lot of people like to mount antennas on pickup trucks. Right there. Or they might go to the center or at the toolbox, something like that which is great if you're using the right antenna. Now if you'll see my mag mount, I have it up here and that's probably where it's gonna stay at. Um, I would have to run the coax down into the bed along inside the frame and inside the cab of the truck, which is fine. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Um, the best place to mount an antenna on a vehicle is dead center. Dead center of the vehicle is generally, usually 98% of the time, the best place to mount the antenna because the antenna and the vehicle, if you put the antenna at the back, you can get reflection off the front of the truck or the car or whatever you have. If you put the antenna at the back, you could get reflection off the back of the vehicle. And that that's gonna skip, you're gonna be talking more behind you than you will forward. Same thing, if you mount an antenna here at the back, you can be talking off the front of the truck, so you're not getting anything behind you. That's just the way it goes. Now, for the fiberglass antenna, see the coil is getting up above that roof line. This being a three foot antenna, I generally like to have four to five feet of antenna. Um, three foot's kind of a waste to me, but I do understand if you need to get your vehicle into a garage or something, the three-footer, while the coil is above the cab, the height is not so much that you can't, say, get into your garage or into a parking deck. Some of the wrong ways that I've seen is especially with these Wilsons. They'll take and mount that right there. Where's the coil? It's right here by the body. You got to get the coil up above. And like I said, one of the longer shafts, can help you do that or getting an antenna like a hustler where the coil itself is actually already a midways up and just today uh, passed by a guy he had a Wilson 2000 mounted on the bumper and it was right up against the tail light right up against the body I don't see how that is even working. I mean, it's. I mean, it does work a little bit, but 
it, it's it's about the worst place to mount an antenna, especially one with a coil like this, is to mount it right up against something. Now even back here at the tail light for a fiberglass antenna wouldn't be a bad choice. Um, I would want to get a much taller antenna than this three footer uh, just to get this coil. That's where the coil starts is right here and it's just right at the bed rail height. But this would not be a terrible place to mount an antenna if that's all you have. Um, but this is one of the mistakes that I see Jeep guys making. Um, they are, are mounting to their bumper or to a uh, to the spare tire mount, but they're using a very short antenna and maybe only this much is sticking up above the vehicle itself. Um, and you're not hearing uh, to the you're not hearing to the full potential. You're not talking to the full potential of your CB system. So get the coil up above like so. I'm not saying you have to have an eight foot antenna, but you get the point. You're still here? Well, that's a good thing for you. Cause in a future video, I will be giving away this Wilson little wheel mag mount antenna. Um, just as you see here in the packaging, um, I am going to use this in an install video and um and we're going to compare this little wheel to this striker sra10 and then once i'm done with the video we'll um i'm going to package it back up and uh i'm going to give this away to one of my subscribers brand new antenna ain't nothing wrong with it for free but um the full details of that will be coming up in a future video uh, when I give that away. Um, you do have to be in the 48 of the United States because it is very expensive to ship stuff across the world. Uh, so you have to be in the United States and you have to already be a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And as you see, I made no mention of this earlier in the video or in the title or in the description. So you have to watch my videos to get a giveaway gift. That's just the simple fact of it. So go ahead and subscribe uh, because you will have to be a subscriber, already be a subscriber to win that. Uh, when that video comes up telling you how to get it and all that, um, so yeah, so go on ahead and stay tuned for part three coming up next week where I do believe we're going to do an install on my truck. So yeah, let's, um, you know, that'll be for the beginners too. Uh, I'm not talking to the gurus, I'm talking to the beginners, but I appreciate you staying with me. I know it's been a long winded video, but I'm Jay Rich. You keep your knees in the breeze and the shiny side up. We'll be seeing you.